Let's talk about this Dynamite report. Then we got a Rampage lineup. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, the show opened up with a... Oh, we didn't even talk about Connor. Oh, uh, God. We got to talk about Connor. No, we don't have to. CM Punk beat Dax Harwood. Great match. CM Punk beat him. Anaconda Vice, Dax Harwood. Uh, they're clearly uh, going babyface here, which is very interesting, as we're going to find out later when we do the MGF promo. But uh, excellent, excellent match. CM Punk, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, everybody. I think he's a better worker now than he's ever been. Ooh. Yep. He was great in this match, and so was Dax. Excellent, excellent match. We had uh, Tornado Tag, Hardys, Darby Allen, Sting, Beat Private Party, Butcher, and Blade. Every crazy spot you could imagine. The big dive by Sting, the dive off the, the side of the building by Jeff Hardy through a table, Darby being thrown down a flight of stairs, every crazy thing you can think of. And then uh, Sting and Matt pinned uh, Private Party, double twist of fate, Scorpion Death Drop. Finish was a little wonky with Sting, but they, they made it work. And uh, this was this crowd was awesome, and they were super into these matches. Sting is awesome. Holy Moses. We had uh, Danielson and Moxley beating the Varsity Blondes. Just beat the goo out of them. It was awesome. And uh, afterwards, there was the promo by Moxley, where, in fact, they have named the group the Blackpool Combat Club, the greatest name that you can say without an FCC violation for these two men. And uh, you need to bleed, you need to sweat, and you need to enjoy pain if you want to join their club. They should hold all the championships, just so you all know. Wigan Snake Pit, right? MGF did a promo. I cannot help, I can't help but recall that I brought up that idea about how Wardlow was going to come out for that TNT title shot. And MGF was going to say, I'm going to release you from the contract, but you have a 90-day no-compete, so you can't have your match tonight. And for 90 days, the guy was not allowed to wrestle. He'd show up and do whatever. I was ridiculed. I was mocked. I was well, called a weren't. fool. You were? And then you know what happens? What happened? Well, MGF says, bro, I'm, I'm not letting you any contract. I'm going to pay you, but I'm paying you to sit at home, just like WWE does. You're going to sit at home, make your money, and you're going to rot in obscurity. And he cackles and laughs, and Wardlow shows up, and MGF runs down his family. Wardlow gets all furious. He gets dragged out by security. And then MGF, at the end of the thing, says, The pinnacle is not over. And starting next week, with FTR, the pinnacle will move up in the world. And, of course, FTR are clearly turning babyface. So will the ass boys be joining the pinnacle? Or will that part kind of be a swerve and another team's going to show up and beat up all four guys? We'll have to uh, we'll have to find out. But something's going down next week. This is a fantastic promo, by the way. Yes. We had uh, the best friends. Uh, they're no longer friends with Wheeler. He's a friend of me now, this Wheeler Yuta. Adam Cole beat Jay Lethal. Great match. It's Adam Cole and Jay Lethal, brother. What do you think you're going to get? So Jay Lethal goes for the uh, lethal injection. Ref is distracted. Cole low blows him out of midair, pins him, and then cuts the promo. He wants another shot at Hangman Page, which he will be getting at some point down the road, probably at one of those uh, Battle of the Belts specials would be my guess. And uh, Hangman runs down, whips everybody with his belt. He gets jumped, laid out. Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Christian Cage make the save. So we've got uh, Red Dragon. Uh, fighting for the tag team titles and uh, Cole versus Page, all coming. And and I might add, CM Punk did this thing. He wants a belt, but which one? They asked. We'll find out. Now stop right there, okay? Adam Page, and I know people. I don't want people to get all emotional about this. I like Hangman Page. I I think they have made some missteps along the way with him. But all that aside, I, I really like him. I like him as the AEW champion, but. For this only not only goes for him, but for anybody, especially in a position of power. If you're going to come out there with your belt, don't walk into the ring, stare at three guys, slowly take off your belt, then start whipping them. I to me, I just that's one of those little things, and I hopefully Lance doesn't yell at me for this. Hopefully he would agree with me for this. But like, have the belt with you, run out there, and then start whipping ass and doing it that way. I thought that would have been more effective, and then have him be dragged down. It would have been a more valiant attempt than just looking. 
I don't want to say kind of dumb, but it's kind of dumb to do something like that. I didn't mind it, it at all. Not? And I'll That's tell you fair, why. Okay. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because there were three guys in the ring, and he starts running out of the ring. And even, I think it was even JR was like, he said something like, uh, he pointed out that this was probably pretty stupid to come out one against three. So if you're there with two of your buddies, Mike, and uh, you you call out one guy, and this guy comes out, you're not going to immediately just jump him. You're going to look at him like, look at this dummy. And the dummy Here's got the in the ring, and they looked at him like, could you possibly be this dumb? And then he looked down, and he took off his belt, and they were like, oh, he's not that dumb. And then he started whipping him, so it actually worked. Well, see, he got me, overwhelmed. Like, then you get the, the, the dumb heels that are just standing there watching him take off his belt. To me, it's like if you're going to run out there and put yourself in that kind of harm, like it, like the way Moxley would do it, I that's the way I would probably prefer, which is take it off. You're wrapping it around. You got that big ass Texas Virginia. Texas, Virginia, belt buckle on his hand, and then he slides in there and then starts to go, and then the numbers game drags him down again. It is a picking of the nits. No, but see, the- see, Buzz here makes a good point, Mike. If that guy takes off his belt and then runs down the aisle, his pants are going to fall down. Touche, Buzz. Thank you. Which actually reminds me. So I got a uh, two-year-old. She's two and a half now, Hanalei. And, bro, she's tiny, okay? Because she's my kid, obviously. So she's so little. So Paisley, we had, uh, I don't think we, we potty trained her till she was almost three. And she was bigger than, than Hanalei. So uh, Hanalei had just turned two, and uh, we were going to go on that Disney cruise. And they had all these little pools and everything like that. And Hanalei was not allowed to go in any of the kids' pools unless she was potty trained. That was like the rule. You could not yeah. go in with swim diapers or whatever. So we're like, ah, man, well, let's just do it. And so she was like... I think she had just turned, she was two year, two years and like a month or two or something like that when we started. And uh, amazingly, it worked great. She was totally potty trained at uh, like 23 months or 24 months or something like that. It's cool. So, uh, but then of course we went on the cruise and she didn't want to do anything except breastfeed. <laughs> but the point is it was done. Oh, boy. So anyway, the point of this is she's so small that like, her tiny little clothes, she wears like 18-month clothes. Wait, hold on. How small is she? They fit. Her 18, 18 to 24-month clothes fit if she's wearing a giant diaper. <laughs> well, now she's not in diapers. So she's got this tiny little, this little butt, quite frankly. And so her none of her clothes fit. And so she's constantly running around the house like Hangman Page if he took his belt off. And she runs, and her pants just fall down. And then she has to pull them up, and then she chases after her sister. She thinks she's Sonic the Hedgehog, and her pants fall down again. So anyway, leave that well, get, belt on, Hangman. Get old boy and your daughter some suspenders then, too, in case they got to take the belt. Some suspenders. Because it's easy. Never. You may need to take I'd her belt I'd rather she off. ran around with her, at, her buttocks hanging out than put suspenders on that poor kid. You can only do that for so long, though, before somebody calls the But authority. you know who does wear suspenders? Who does? Fauntleroy. Ah. We'll get to him in a minute. We had uh, the Sammy Ty segment, which is uh, building up a match with, uh, I believe it will be Ethan Page and Paige Van Zant. Page and Page will be facing Ty Conti and Sammy Guevara. Do we need to talk about this, or is everybody angry enough? Oh, they're angry enough. Then we had Layla Hirsch versus Red Velvet. I couldn't help but notice I went on my uh, my Twitter here. I want to read this this tweet because you know you know how my timeline is. So uh, this bloke here, where is it? It's a good one. Luckily, we got a lot of time. Uh, this person here, he just wrote uh, something like, yeah, Brian Alvarez, not a big fan of Layla Hirsch and Red Velvet. Well, that's quite the leap, Travoris. Yeah, the match sucked. Doesn't mean I'm not a fan of either of them. Doesn't mean I think they suck. Doesn't mean I want to uh, intrude on their private life. But no, they did not have a good match last night. Clunky, not a good match. Uh, Layla Hirsch cheated to win, hit her with a bar or something like that. And then uh, Chris Statlander ran down after the match and made the save. Uh, We'll do the AEW Rampage lineup in a moment. Thunder Rosa promo where she was beat up by uh, um, Nyla Rose. That'll be the first feud for her. And then the main event, Jericho Appreciation Society. Jericho and Daniel Garcia versus John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Holy smokes, what a main event this was. This comeback by John Silver 
And I, I don't want to downplay Alex Reynolds because they had a double team deal at the end where they hit like nine moves in a row on poor Daniel Garcia. And he wasn't even, there was one spot where he was in the wrong spot and they still made it work. And this crowd just lost it at that. And then, of course, it was uh, not the finish. And um, finally there at the end, Garcia, uh, Reynolds got hit with Floyd. Garcia put him in the Scorpion Death Lux, submitted him. Bro, that match was awesome. So uh, Jericho Appreciation Society gets to win there. This was a really, really good episode of, of uh, Dynamite. We'll see how it does in the ratings tonight. You know how these ratings are. No matter what it does, I'm going to have to hear about it. But I'm not going to open Twitter, so I won't hear about it. So go well, gonna, do whatever, nerds. I'm out of here. You're going to have to open I'm going to go make a pizza. You're going to have to post it up there. Now, is that pizza going to have a cauliflower crust? No, I use uh, low-carb tortillas. It's even better. <laughs> Rob Bartlett is the man He tried the best he can Vince on the new What Rob Bartlett's gonna do to you Vinny V, Happy Corbin, and Bartlett in a three-way Oh Here comes the commentator Rob Bartlett, he's a great imitator of Vince McMahon Rob, you What? Wow. Is this Rob Bartlett? Guilty as ch- Hey! Oh, look who's here on the show, everybody! There's a star here. Rob, hey, Rob Bartlett is joining us here today. How you doing, Rob? I don't know what to say about this. To actually be proposed to in song was a beautiful thing. <laughs> I couldn't really do much of an impression of him other than the, the tone of the voice, you know? <laughs> You still got it. <laughs> you still got it. I think I had the wrong guy. Well, what, what did you learn about the the Rob Bartlett that you you uh, you checked out? He was an explorer way back when. That's not him. <laughs> oh, I don't know. He was born August fifteenth, eighteen seventy five. And so, died and you, April 28, 1946. He died in, okay, but you thought he might be on the show this week. Well, I couldn't figure out why you guys picked him. You're going to go to the Brian and Vinnie Matt Cleary Memorial Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey. Aye. Well, there he goes. Very aye. prestigious. You get nothing. You've warmed the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles now. And um, Lucky fella. I'm... Uh, I'm I'm moist. I'll just say that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm moist. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.